sadly but who loves kisses I love me some kisses okay so here is the plan they have to unwrap each one of them have 49 kisses they have to unwrap each one of them and put it in this bucket okay so raise your hand if you think that he's gonna win what's your name Jonathan Jonathan everybody say hi Jonathan Everyone say, hi, Julio. Okay, let's count them down. Three, two, one, go. Okay, who thinks we should put a timer on them? Timer? Okay, 30 seconds and now. Okay, we have 10 seconds. Let's come down. with me and raise your hands and begin to thank the Lord for his protection over your family tonight. Why don't you thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy? We're going to talk about just how beautiful he is to us. Here we go. Jesus. 
higher than him, that there's nobody that compares to God. Here's the thing. He already knows that nobody compares to him, but you have to make the decision to lift him up above everything else in your life. This is a time of worship where we give back to God. And although we have the praise team up here that has been practicing, this isn't a performance at all. This is a time where we lay down everything aside and we say, I choose today to make sure that everything is not above God, but God is above everything in my life. I choose today to make sure that my worries are not above God. I choose today to make sure that my finances aren't above God. I choose today that, to make sure that even my successes are not above God. How many of you want to play with Raise your hands right now and stand in agreement with me. We're going to sing this one more time. No one compares. And I want you to really think about how you have to make that decision. Nobody else can make that decision but you. So let's sing that right here. No one compares to you. No one compares. No one could ever take your You're the king of kings. You're the Lord of Lord. you about not only do you have to make the decision to make sure that you worship him but I also want to give you the reminder that Jesus Christ paid the price not so that he could sit there and let you suffer in your own pain not so that he could sit there and watch you suffer in daily lives he knows your situation and he knows what you're facing daily but he has paid the price so that you can have somebody that you could run to today. So not only do you have to make the decision to worship him for the good, for the good God that he is, but you have to make the decision to run to the Father whenever his arms are open for you. You have to make the decision to run to the Father whenever you need a pick-me-up. So that's what I wanna have our hearts be focused on for the next song right here. This is Run to the Father. I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it long. I hear your invitation.
you what Wednesday nights are not ever plan B look over to your friend and say not plan B Wednesday nights are not plan B it is plan A and the presence of God feels lives on Wednesday nights so it doesn't matter what your previous church taught or what you used to think Wednesday night is not just hump day it's not just midweek service it is plan A God's plan A this baby boy this baby boy, last week, he 
came upstairs after last Wednesday night, walked upstairs, and he said, Mama, I got the Holy Ghost tonight. He said, he said, little Bill's brother, so I assume it's Thomas Ray, laid hands on me, and I got the Holy Ghost. Now, let me just tell you, that was not upstairs. That was downstairs. Why don't we right now just lift up the King of Glory and you don't give him a plan B praise. Come on, give him like you're here on purpose, like he's a great big God, like he's the King of Glory, like he's mighty, like he's awesome, like he's great. So he woke up the next day and he said, uh, he said, Woke up the next morning, he said, Mama, I got the Holy Ghost last night, and Jesus told me to get baptized. Am I right? Is that the truth? So give me five. We are so excited about what God is doing in your life. Amen? Amen. Come on, give him a hand. You can go down there. I'm going to do one more thing. Rose, I want you to come here, Rose. Come on. I'm, I'm going to ask Rose to come here. Also connected to this family is, is Rose, and she came last week, and she needed a miracle in her life. And we were at church till, till 11 o'clock, ministering to Rose. And the, the process is not finished, but the process has started. And she was here Sunday night, she was here last night, she's back here tonight with hands lifted in the air. Now listen, love, Love is a powerful thing. This church is not saying that you're finished. This church is saying you've started. And we are going to hook up with you. And we are going to walk with you as long as you keep trying. We are going to be here to support you. So come get over here right by me. I want everybody to stretch your hands toward her right now. And I just want you to begin to say over her that he is faithful to complete the work that he has started. Rose, just lift your hands right now and let the love of God just bless you. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you never quit on us. Thank you never, that you never give up on us. And no, we are not finished. But you are a God that is faithful to complete what you start. So give us the strength to carry on in Jesus' name. Amen. You see how loved you are? You see how loved you are? Now come on. My heart is bent. My heart is bent. with God and I want to tell you this you don't have to figure everything out you don't have to wonder how you're gonna make it through tomorrow you don't have to figure all that out all you got to do right now is just run to the Father all you got to do right now is just run to him okay 
All you got to do is just quit hiding. Somebody right now just say, Father, I'm going to quit hiding. I'm going to quit hiding. And you don't have to figure out your freedom. You don't have to figure out how you're going to get the Holy Ghost. You don't have to figure out how your family's going to accept what God is doing in your life. Right now, you just got to run to Him, okay? I'm going to ask Davey just to sing that, a run to the Father. And everybody just lift your hands and sing it. A run to the Father, I fall in Come on, fall into His grace. Done with the no reason to My heart found. My heart dismiss yet. Right now the presence of God is in this place. If you need a touch, keep playing, Davey. If you need a touch, come on, just lift your hands right now. Holy Spirit, flood this place however you choose, however you want to. Flood every home right now. Flood every teenager right now. Flood every child right now on the level that they need to see you. Bring revelation wherever you need to bring revelation, Father. It's beyond the hype. It is true. True. True Father's touch is what we're looking for. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for revival. We thank you for hope. We thank you for forgiveness. Somebody just cry out the name of Jesus right now. Come on, just cry out the name of Jesus because he hears you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The presence of God is in this place right now. Do you feel it? You kiddos go carry it on youth carry it on carry it on carry it on let the presence of God minister to you a good hand. We got a good crowd for the adults. Me and Jeremy, me and Brother Jeremy, Pastor Jeremy, we swapped our Sundays because he wanted to hear me, but he is going to have to work while I preach. So I was here to hear him last week, but he's not going to be here to hear me this week. So I gave him the first Sunday this month, and I'm going to take the second month, a uh, second week for this month. So uh, I'm looking forward to Sunday. We had 265 people here last Sunday. <laughs> last time I was preaching, doing all the preaching, we had 165. <laughs> so y'all know what people like, right? <clears throat> But anyway, no, we're very happy to see the progress, and and we did raise our children so that they would be better than us, and uh, so I'm just very, very proud of the direction, and I'm proud of the ministry. If Brienne can bring her people up, then I can bring mine up. Come here, Don. Mr. Don was sleeping on the street with the ants. Thank you, Lord. It was tough. Taking a bath in, in the citizens. There wasn't no bath. <laughs> there wasn't no bath. He was just swimming in the he was just swimming off in that fountain out there in front of the bank. But anyway, but Don met me one day and said can you help me, Pastor? I said, man, I can help you in more than one way. Amen. We gave him a place to live, and then I started inviting him to church. 
Last Sunday, he was sitting there listening to the Bible study, and on the way home, light bulbs was going off. He was like, well, I know what's been wrong with my life. I never got rid of all that sin in my life. <laughs> and he said, I'm thinking God's working on me to figure out how I can get rid of all this sin that's been on me that I got to get rid of. So he started out cutting his hair, I guess. <laughs> He had a bunch of hair and had a bunch of hair all over here. But anyway, he shaved all that off. But I've got to tell him it's more than that. One of these days you're going to see him up in that baptistry. And I'm going to dunk him. I'm talking about dunk him down. Amen. Amen. He's been clean. And I'm telling you, he's on, his right, he's on the right road for Jesus. Amen. And smart. He's as smart as a whip. I talk to him about the Bible, and he, he it just comes on him. Yeah. Jay, I, love y'all. I love y'all very much. Yeah, it's a little tough. We love you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope God makes him prettier, though. I can tell you that. I hope God can. <laughs> well, me and him have a relationship that, that we can talk to each other the way we want to, and we have a good time. And he knows I love him. And I'm very, very proud of him. I put him on the news. I put him on the news this week, and all the TV started going pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Amen. Well, anyway, I love you, and I appreciate Mike Cammy, Mike and uh, Mike Ramsey and Cammy. They are faithful, and uh, uh, I personally, this year, personally, am going to fill that bus up. And you're going to see people walk into this place off of that bus that Pastor Jan has invited. I'm going to fill that bus. You watch what I'm telling you. I'm going to fill that bus up. And people's going to be riding that bus to get here to the church. And uh, people's going to get deliverance. Amen. They're going to be set free right here in this house. Amen. How many excited about what God's doing, huh? I want you to know I enjoy teaching. So I have a class on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And then I have a class on Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night. And there's four strong lessons that you need to listen to. And most everybody in this house has listened to it. But if you haven't gone through those four lessons, then you do everything you can to try to get into the class so that you can get those four lessons. Amen. It's more than membership. It sets a foundation in your spiritual walk with God that will turn your life around. Amen. All right, let's make welcome my daughter. Amen. If you're going with me, I'm going out. Hey, doesn't he look handsome tonight? Looking handsome. All right, while they're going out, let me just go ahead and say we just got a new um, shipment of this book, God's Law of First Things, in the bookstore. If you have not read it, amazing book. Absolutely amazing book. Um, So highly recommend it. It was the January recommended reading. The February recommended reading is His Needs, Her Needs. February is a month of love, Valentine's Day. So um, His Needs, Her Needs is an outstanding book. We're going to have five in the bookstore coming up. Mm-hmm. Also, this is the book Young Liberty is actually studying right now. So, yeah, we have, I think we have ten, ten in the bookstore. So, um, also, Valentine Banquet this Friday night, always so fun. You don't have to be married. You don't ha- it's not a date. I mean, Robin's bringing Jamie. They're just going to laugh and have a blast together. So you don't have to have a date. It's not a couples-only thing. It's just come and enjoy your church family. It is a fundraiser for the youth and for the ladies' uh, ministry. So this year, it's not just for the youth. The ladies' ministry is going to, thank you, Jaheem, is going to benefit from it. So um, that, that is this two nights from tonight. Also, Daniel Fast is coming up. If you need a good recipe, hit Janet Parker up. If you're like, I don't know what to cook, she's got about nine copies um, of a squash chili that in about three weeks you're going to wish you had this recipe because you're going to be like, I am so sick of beans. So hit her up for that and um, 
couple, those were a couple of announcements that I had. You know what? Our adult class has like 84 of us in here tonight. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? God is working. God is really, really. And, and no, it's not all about the numbers, but for every number is a soul. So why would we be happy to have two? I mean, if I can preach to 84 and 84 people come and lift up the name of Jesus or two, who would, I mean, it's about numbers somewhat when with every number is a soul. So don't give me that hogwash. It's not about numbers. Maybe not when you're counting roaches or ants or starfish, but when it's people, numbers matter. So, okay, seems like there was something else I was going to say, but slipped my mind. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for revival. Thank you for a church that is on fire. Thank you for radical transformations. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for filling our children with the Holy Ghost. And Father, thank you for speaking a word to me tonight for your people. I pray that you would open our hearts to receive what you have for us. We want to receive it all, and we want to walk in it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody say amen. All right. Week Four, so say it after me, get free and stay free. Get free and stay free. All right, so last week we discussed what deliverance is. And um, if you missed it, go check it out on YouTube. You can look it up. And how Christ has already made our freedom completely available to us. The ball is in our court as to whether or not we walk in that freedom already been provided for us okay but we do have a responsibility there are people that died still bound when jesus died for their freedom okay so you cannot just say oh he's a sovereign god and god's will shall be done not true the ball is totally in your court uh for whether or not you get your freedom we're going to talk about that tonight our crowd is getting so much bigger i got to back up so i can see everybody all right, and we also began to identify some of the ways that evil spirits can infiltrate our lives. Sin, um, and I think there was, there was like five. Pride, sin, like a state of sin, um, inherited, um, and my mind is, I, won't, I can't slow down enough right now to think about what the others are. But go, go watch it, go watch it. So we can carry on with this one. All right, so here we go, part four. You will want a piece of pen, a piece of paper, and a pen, because it is very practical. It is very good. Tonight we are going to talk about the very important, necessary requirements for deliverance. Okay, this is going to be preparing you to receive the deliverance that God has for you. But I first want to talk about how a uh, Christian's life can be infiltrated by demons because that can be controversial and people will say wait a minute wait a minute I'm a believer I've already been baptized in the Holy Ghost don't tell me that I have an infiltration in my life of demonic oppression because I have already been a born-again believer let, let me just hold it and let me just explain to you for a minute okay so we are made in the image of God we are three parts okay we are body soul and spirit you are not a body with a spirit and a soul that is not who you are you are an eternal spirit temporarily living in an earth suit this right here is temporary it's touch kind of paint your friend and say hey this is your dirt body you are dirt you are just dirt. Now, you may dress your dirt up, and you may put $5,000 outfits on your dirt, but it's dirt. It's a dirt body, okay? It's an earth suit. That's not who you are. You are an eternal spirit temporarily living in an earth suit, and this earth suit is what makes you legal on the earth, okay? And you possess a soul, okay? So everybody follow me here. Paul explains it really easily in a... Uh, India, we're going to go to Galatians in just a minute. So, when you become a born-again believer, baptized in the Holy Ghost, that regenerates your spirit, Josh. The Holy Ghost moves in and regenerates your spirit. But you still have a soul, and you still have a body. 
Okay? Now, let me tell you how this works. Your flesh, which is your physical, fleshly, worldly, dirty way, <laughs> your dirty way, okay? Your flesh is always warring against your spirit. One or the other will be in control, okay? If your flesh is in control, then it tells your spirit to shut up. And then your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, starts spewing out everything and expressing everything that the flesh is driving. Okay? Make sense? But when your spirit, Sherry, takes the lead and it tells your flesh to shut up, then your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions starts spewing out, so to speak, everything that your spirit is driving it to push out. Make sense? And the one that's in control, your flesh or your spirit, is the one that you feed the most. Okay? Your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions that is just the expression to everybody of who's in the driver's seat. I'll prove it to you. Galatians 5, verse 16 through 18. Paul said, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, let the Spirit in the driver's seat, and you can tell the flesh to shut up, right? You following me? Keep going. For the flesh wants in the driver's seat, but the spirit also wants in the driver's seat. Are you following me there? They war against each other, and they are contrary to one another so that you don't do the things that you wish. Okay, keep going. But if your spirit is in the driver's seat, then you're not under the law. Okay? Now, when your flesh is in the driver's seat, your soul will express the following. Adultery. What am I stepping all over? Hershey kisses. Evan, okay, fornication. If you're fornicating, it's, you don't have to tell me you're saved. I'm telling you your flesh is in the driver's seat. Clear. Not even judging you. Just telling me who's in charge uncleanness, lewdness. Now, this is when your flesh is in the driver's seat. All of these things will come out of your soul. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who let the flesh in the driver's seat, uh-oh, going to miss out on the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, the Holy Spirit comes to regenerate you, and I told you the Holy Spirit moves into your spirit. So your spirit can start working its way through all of that junk to tell the flesh, hit the road, Jack. I'm taking over this boat. Okay? When the Spirit takes the driver's seat, this is what will flow. I should use spew when I'm talking about the flesh, but this is what will flow from your soul. Keep going. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Self-control. Now, right now, you know, if you'll be honest with yourself, you know who's in the driver's seat. Your soul's been telling everybody. And when that mind of yours gets on Facebook, you're just telling everybody who's in the driver's seat, really. I mean, I don't care. I don't care if you take a paragraph to say it. You're just telling us who's in the driver's seat. Okay? So when the Holy Spirit comes, now, because your flesh has been in the driver's seat for so long that your soul is spewing out mess, 
You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can be a born-again believer, but you still got to deal with all the evil spirits that are in your life from when your flesh was in the driver's seat. Okay? Now, evil spirits can only infiltrate your body and your soul. They cannot touch your spirit. Why? Because I said you really are a spirit, correct? And you are, 1 Corinthians, India, you really are a temple for the Holy Ghost. Your spirit belongs to the Holy Ghost, okay? You got that? So the enemy cannot steal your spirit. It belongs to the Holy Ghost. Because the enemy didn't die for you. He did not buy you. Jesus bought you with a price, and you are not your own. Okay, so if you go to hell, you went against everything that Jesus did to purchase you, to have an inheritance with him forever, okay? But evil spirits, since they cannot infiltrate your spirit, they are confined to only infiltrate your body or your soul. Okay? That is why you can be sick and the sickness be demonic. And that is why Jesus came to heal. That's why salvation in the Greek is not just get you to heaven. It is also healed. Okay? Healed. So when you're healed, your physical body is delivered from the evil that has infiltrated it. You can have the Holy Ghost and still have cancer. But you also can be healed of that cancer by the same God that filled you with his spirit, right? Are you following me? So maybe your body's not sick, but your soul is sick. And you're bound by all kinds of tormenting spirits. The Holy Spirit inside of you fully intends to drive that out, but this is where you have a part to play, okay? So, don't ever let anybody tell you since you got the Holy Ghost or since you became a born-again believer that you don't ever battle evil spirits, okay? you got to get that spirit in the driver's seat and drive out every squatter and evict, serve eviction notices to some things that don't belong, following me? Somebody just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is a message of hope. Okay? So, we're going to have a lot of fun here. First Thessalonians 5, 23 sums up everything I just told you. Now, I'm going to add some India that I didn't give Carissa. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, which is who you are, but not just your spirit, your soul and your body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to show up with a regenerated spirit but a tormented mind. Don't have to show up at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with that. All right? But you have a responsibility, and we're going to talk about it tonight. There are some definite requirements for your deliverance. There are some definite requirements for your freedom. It is not just Jesus Christ died for me to be free, so I'm, I'm, I'm free. No, you, the ball is in your court, right? Number one, honesty. Honesty. You've got to be honest with yourself. That goes along with what I said in the second series or the second session that you've got to come out of denial. Hey, Patty, I'm glad to see you. I, just, I love that lady. Just saw her. You've got to come out of denial. You've got to be honest with yourself okay you got to learn how to look that man in the mirror in the eye say I'm talking to you right now it is time 
for us to quit hiding, time for you to quit hiding, there's a problem. Honest with yourself, and then you got to be honest with God. Now, lack of honesty maintains darkness, and I love how Sharon Driver said it a few weeks ago, uh, or last week. She said, uh, evil spirits are like mold. They grow in the dark. Okay, they grow in the dark, they glow in the dark, they show in the dark, okay? So you got to be honest with God and with yourself, and what honesty does is shines light on them, okay? Unconfessed sin gives evil spirits legal rights to stay in your life, okay? Un unconfessed sin gives evil spirits legal right to stay in your life, okay? You've got to get on the same page as God, okay? I know it's not preaching, it's teaching, but it's worth hanging on to if you'll not let yourself get bored. Psalm 32 and 5, as India's looking it up because I didn't give you these, David said, I acknowledged my sin to you, Lord, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Outside of the sin of blaspheming against the Holy Ghost, okay, outside of that, the only sins that God cannot forgive are the ones you won't bring to him. He cannot, he will not forgive blaspheming against the Holy Ghost, but that's not the only unforgivable sin. The sin you won't bring to him, the sin you won't confess, he cannot forgive. Okay? Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I did not pull this up, but I do believe in Jeremiah. It says that the, the heart of man is so desperately wicked that we don't even know our own wickedness. This is a good scripture. Um, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 Write that down. That's a good one. Search me, O oh God, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Okay? So, number one, honesty. You got it? Everybody got it? Number two, humility. Humility says I cannot save myself. I don't got it. I don't got it. And the reason I say that is because you know, like little Jones is so cute. And you can say, hey, Jones, you need some help with that? No, I dot it. I dot it. I don't know if he still says it like that, but Liam, I dot it. Why? Because they want to be so big. I mean, they just want to be independent. I don't need your help. I got it. And you know, it's, it's not real cute at your age that you're still walking around saying, no, I got it. No, I got it. God, I got it. You don't got it. You don't. Okay? So you have to come to a place of humility to say, I, Lord, I can't do this. I can't quit this on my own. I can't control this on my own. I cannot lay this aside on my own. I've got to have your help. Okay? Humility. Okay, Jeremiah 17 and 9. Thank you, Mom. I can't deliver myself. Humility is admitting and recognizing your complete dependence upon God for freedom. Now, let me just tell you what I feel as I read this, what, I, what came to my mind. Maybe it was the Lord. You wouldn't be so dependent on people if you'd start depending on God. I'm going to let you down. Don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. I can't pastor you the way you want me to pastor you. Okay? Get dependent on God and you won't be leaning on me so much. Because Pastor Jeremy's going to let you down if you're trying to put him in God's place. Okay? So recognize 
I'm dependent on God. I'm desperately dependent on God. And then we can properly pastor you. But we can never give you all the attention that God is just desiring to give you. All right, James 4, verse 6, and we're going to go to 7. And we're going we're gonna to do the second part of um, 4 and 6. India, you are outstanding. But God gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Keep going. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some of you have been resisting God and you can't figure out why the devil is living in your house. And your house might just be right here. You can't figure out why the devil is all right here because you're resisting God. You're, you're resisting the wrong one. You're resisting the wrong party. All right, so honesty, humility, and numero trace. Repentance. Cannot get around repentance. Repentance is turning away from a life of sin. Turning away from Satan. It is actually a hatred, getting a hatred for the evil that you're, you've been involved in for, for all your life. I mean, we are born and shapen in iniquity. I said a couple of... Wednesday nights ago, didn't teach Bryce to steal, didn't have to teach Bryce to lie, three years old, lying and stealing. Didn't have to teach me to lie. I mean, we are born and shapen in iniquity. And so when we repent, we actually, even, even if we can't quite change our behavior, repentance is not being able to change your behavior, because if you could change it, you would have already done it on your own. But it's just hating it, even in the middle of it. Okay, God, I cannot do this on my own, but I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And with your help, I will not do this for the rest of my life. I will not live in this, but I'm going to keep coming, running to the Father, running to the Father. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Where you're not repenting is when you're not quite sure you hate it. God, I don't know. I don't know if I hate it. I ain't ready to bring that to God yet because if we don't talk about it, maybe God doesn't know it's there. I'm still trying to figure, I'm still trying to find in the Bible if it's okay. Still trying to find a preacher that'll tell me this is okay. You'll find one. It doesn't matter what you're looking for, you'll find one. Ezekiel 20 and 43 says, And there you shall remember your ways and all your doings with which you were defiled. And he uses a very strong word here, Ezekiel 20. I know I'm not waiting on you, um, India, you're doing a great job. He uses a very strong word here. And you shall loathe. Loathe. I mean, detest. Hate with a passion yourselves in your own sight because of all the evils that you have committed so you come to god god i know i'm still sinful i hate that i do this i i hate this and i'm going to get on the same page with you and i understand god that this is not right so i'm going to quit hiding from you and i'm going to run to you with this okay and if you'll help me i will work on this and if it takes me 20 years, God, I'm going to get up every day, and I'm going to work on it. And you've got a church that will be patient with you. You have a pastor that will be patient with you. Okay, so write this down. This is, this is for re repentance. Deliverance isn't just for quick relief. Okay? Deliverance is not a Band-Aid. It's not just to get you quick relief. So I'm going to get on the same page with you, God, real quick, and I'll just admit I've done it. I have said, <laughs> fine, I'm sorry. <laughs> fine, I'm sorry. <sighs> because I can't go to bed mad at you. Fine, I'm not mad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sorry. He kn and that's about the only sorry he could get out of me for like 20 years plus still. <laughs> I'm being honest, ain't I, babe? <laughs> 
I hate to admit that I'm wrong. I hate to admit that I'm wrong. And so it's not, okay, hurry, Pastor Jeremy. God, I'm sorry, real quick, just deliver me, get me out. Of, I, I got to start feeling better. I'm sorry. It's not what deliverance is. It's not a rescue. And I told somebody the other day, um, in my 20s and in my 30s, I was such a pushover, but something happened at 38, and I just got, like, mean. And they called me the other day, and they wanted me to rescue them, and it was involving the almighty dollar. And I said, I will just tell you right now, I am not the person to come to if you're looking for a money rescue, but I am the person to come to if you are sick of being in this situation. Because I can help you without giving you one dollar, but I can hurt you if I pay everything you're bringing to me right now. Okay? So deliverance is not for just quick relief. you got to loathe the thing you need help with. Okay? All right. Number five? Is it five? Four. Renunciation means to renounce. To renounce is to formally abandon, to divorce. That's what renouncing is. You divorce. We've been divorcing all the wrong things. We've been divorcing people, and we need to be divorcing the, the wicked one. Okay? Renunciation is the forsaking of participation with evil. The forsaking of participation with evil. Renouncing, renunciation is, is the proof of your repentance. Okay? It's the action part of your repentance. Repentance is you come to God, you hate um, what you're doing, and you say, God, please forgive me. And then the renouncing is the divorcing, the breaking up with Satan, the going into your house and saying, Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't want to carry your name anymore. Get out of my life. You got it? That's what renouncing is. Okay? To formally abandon. Matthew 3, 7 through 8. Matthew 3, 7 through 8. John the Baptist was baptizing, and when he saw many of the religious people that came... To his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to come get a quick rescue? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, put some action behind what you're saying. Renounce. Now, this is how you renounce. Acts 19, 18 through 19, prime example of how how you renounce. Acts 19, 18 through 19. And by the way, I, I may not like to say I'm sorry, but I am not a thrower. <laughs> that did feel good, but I don't do that. <laughs> this, is, this is real renouncing. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Okay? Another prime example of renouncing is when Aaron, when, when Moses came down and Aaron had built a golden calf, and Moses obliterated that thing. You don't, don't. The things that are giving evil spirits access to your life, don't go give them to somebody. I mean, come on now. Destroy that stuff. Don't save it for when you want to do your little throw in the towel. Don't save it for, you know, when you just aren't quite sure you're into, into all of this. Destroy that stuff, okay? That's renouncing. you got to break up with Satan. I keep going on that to 20. Look what happened. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. When you start renouncing some things and breaking up with Satan, the word of God, which is what washes us, 
It's going to prevail in your life, okay? Number five, forgiveness. Go ahead and cringe. You need to weigh out the matter, and you need to say, freedom, bondage. Do I hate this person so much that I am really willing to live with this torment for the rest of my life? Do I hate this person more than I love freedom? That's the question to ask. Do I hate so-and-so more with more passion than I love freedom? The answer is no, you don't. You've just never tasted freedom. If you will taste freedom, you will let so-and-so go. You just haven't tasted a freedom. You need a glimpse of freedom. And if you'll get a glimpse of freedom, you'll let the handicap sign go. You'll get rid of the crutches. You'll get rid of the butt. You don't know what they did. You'll let them go. Because I can tell you, freedom is worth releasing every person in your life in order to obtain. Okay? And if you don't love freedom, I'm just going to ask you. If it's heaven or hell. Do you hate that person enough to go to hell with them? And what's bad is if they've made things right and they're in heaven and you're in hell because of them. I can promise you, you don't hate somebody that much. Or it would do you some good to say, Father, give me a glimpse of what hell looks like. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 tells us it is heaven or hell. Jesus himself, if, if, those, if that up there was a red letter edition, all of this would be red. Everybody know, knows what red means, right? Jesus is speaking. Matthew 6 uh, 14 through 15, Jesus says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Beautiful. But, 15, But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, let's ask, let's get real. Is forgiveness necessary for heaven? So let me ask you again, do you hate that person that much? Look up and say, let them go. Let them go. Um, a good story to read, Matthew 18, verse 21 through 35. I'm not going to read it. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Excellent story to read. The, I mentioned it last week. The, the servant that was unforgiving, that wouldn't forgive a friend, Jesus says, turn them over to the tormentors. The unforgiveness in your life is actually allowing tormentors to be active in your life. Okay? Number six, prayer. Prayer is this. Prayer is communication with God. Let's go to Joel 2.32. Do I have a piano player up here? No. Oh, you have to hear? Because I could get Todd to play something unless y'all already have something planned. Okay. You No, come if you... I'd never want to ask you to not get an altar call. So. Joel 2 and 32 says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's prayer. You pray to God. Communicate with God. Okay? Number seven is warfare. Prayer and warfare are not the same thing. Prayer is to God. Warfare is to the enemy. But let's just get real. Some of us have been fighting God. Some of us have been spending our efforts like Saul of Tarsus when the voice from heaven said, why are you fighting me? And I think some of you, God would be saying, hey, why are you fighting me? The enemy 
in your corner. I'm here trying to fight for you. You're fighting me. You're fighting the wrong side. Okay? You're fighting God. You're resisting God. And warfare is actually meant for the enemy, not for you to be battling God. So prayer is toward God. Warfare is toward the enemy. Now here's weapons of warfare. Submission to God. You got to submit. In your submitting to God, that is actually a powerful weapon you can use. The blood of Jesus Christ is warfare. I mean, as weapons, is a weapon. A mighty, mighty, mighty weapon. The Word of God. Little side note, you can't use it if you don't know it. Because it's not just the Word of God. Anybody got a Bible? Closest Bible. Yeah, I use this at the conference. I use this very one. This right here is not the weapon. This is not the weapon. It's not helping you right here. It is when this comes out of this. When this comes out of this. And if this doesn't go here and here, it'll never come out of here. Okay? So this is not the word of God. It's the spoken word. I mean, this is the word of God. It, it's not a weapon until it's spoken out of your mouth, okay? So yes, it does say in there, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises in judgment shall be condemned. And this is your heritage as servants of the Most High, and, and your righteousness comes from the Lord. But weapons are going to prosper all day long if it's just in that book. It's got to come out of your mouth. I did it today. No weapon, Satan, formed against me will prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against me shall be condemned. This is my heritage, Satan, as a servant of the Most High. And my righteousness comes from the Lord. Now go against that. I had to speak that today. Just today I had to say, God has not given me a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I will not walk like a coward today. I had to just do that today. I had to just say, and I bind every cowardice spirit in the name of Jesus, and I am about to walk into this with power, with love, and my mind is sane. But in that book, I didn't have anything with it just being in there. It had to come out of here, okay? Warfare is extremely important. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. You've been opening your mouth and saying all the wrong things, and you've been shutting your mouth with all the right things. You've been blabbering your junk on Facebook, and then when it comes to talking to the enemy, you don't have a word to say to him. You ought to be too busy for Facebook after tonight. Because you need to, I'm telling you, when it's time to fight the enemy, you don't have time to say, oh gosh, Lord, I need a word. God, I need a word right now. No, you better, you better have it in your heart. Okay? All right. Another weapon is your testimony as a believer. Here's what your testimony is. Because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Because of the finished work, the finished, the finished, the already completed work of Jesus on the cross, I will walk in love today. You've been thinking you don't have a testimony. The last time I looked, he said, it is finished. You've just been leaving your testimony under the Christmas tree with a bow still on it. It's finished for you, but you got to get it. You got to put it on. You got to you got to appropriate it. You got to get your hands on it. Okay, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a powerful weapon. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Listen, I India go to Colossians 1, it's not in my notes, but let me just tell you 
how powerful Almighty God is. Oh, I love him. Colossians 1 and 15. This is who you serve, Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. Don't ever question if Jesus is God or not. He's just the image. He's what you see because God is invisible. Jesus is God. He is the firstborn over all creation. Look how powerful he is. Keep going. For by Jesus, all things were created. Did you know that? That are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones, that's darkness, or dominions, that's evil, or principalities, that's Jezebel, or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Verse 17. And Jesus is before all things, and in him all things consist. Keep going. And he is the head of the body. He is the head of the church. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. Keep going. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. He reigns supreme. Don't tell me your devil is bigger than that. Yeah, you said it, baby. Quit glorifying the devil. Not in my presence. He's a loser. Says my husband. Quit glorifying the devil. Got to finish. The Holy Ghost is a weapon. So in warfare, you have to identify the spirits, and you address them directly by name in a commanding voice, and in faith, command them to go in the name of Jesus. So let me say bitterness. Spirit of bitterness, I see you working in my life, and I command you in the name of Jesus. Loose me, let me go, take your hands off of me, and get out of me now in the name of Jesus. I said it in the ladies' conference. Some of you have been showing up like, bitterness? I sure wish you would go. Kind of like the man when he drops you off. You're like, I know you need to go. Baby, it's cold outside. He ain't leaving when you're talking to him like that. That's a come on to him. Oh, bitterness, I sure wish you would go. No. It's a turn on to bitterness, not leaving. You better get your mean mama voice. Bitterness, I see you rising up inside of me right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you, loose me and let me go and get out of here. Okay. Let's get a little more real. Addiction, I see you operating in my life. And I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you, get out of my life. In Jesus' name. Let's get real, real now. Manipulative spirit, I see me acting like you. And I hate you. I hate you. I hate the way I've been manipulative all my life. And I see you. And I am divorcing you. Right now in the name of Jesus, go. Get your hands off of me. Okay? Mark 16 and 17, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. That is a weapon. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Luke 10 and 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why is stuff hurting us? No. That is so exhaustive. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all, 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 how, all is all. All the power of the enemy and nothing. Do you understand how strong those words are? All and nothing. So why? Why? Why are you being tormented? 
Why are you not walking in victory? Psalm 18 and 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. You'll stand to your feet. Mighty, mighty God. You are amazing, Lord. <laughs> I feel your victory. I feel your conviction. I feel your strength. Oh, that's all I can do to speak in English right now. Satan, I hate you. Jezebel, we hate you. Tormenting spirits, we hate you. Addiction, foul, evil spirits, uncleanness, we hate you. And I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You're going to manifest yourself over these next couple of weeks, and we are going to evict you out of the lives of God's people. You cannot stay. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, you are so big. You reign supreme. You are sovereign. You are powerful. You are glorious. You are majestic. You are beautiful. You are mighty. <laughs> you are the king. You are victorious. And your blood makes demons tormented. <laughs> And your sacrifice on the cross torments Satan. God, I glorify you in this place right now. Father, let your temple be filled with your glory. Come like a flood. Come like a cloud. Let it set. Let your manifest presence come. I bind the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to take your hands off of God's people and you go in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of depression. I bind the spirit of mental illness. And you've been saying that you own these people. You don't own these people. And I command you right now in the name of Jesus, you begin to manifest yourself. And you loose these people and let them go. Because you are nothing compared to Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over this house. I speak the power of the name of Jesus over this house. And every root of bitterness that is in this place, I expose you right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you to let God's people go. Loose them. Take your hands off of their hearts. Take your hands off of their minds. And I command you to let them go in the name of Jesus. Spirit of unforgiveness, I render you powerless right now in the name of Jesus. Loose God's people and let them go. Spirit of witchcraft, we renounce you. We want nothing to do with any spirit that is not of the Holy Spirit. You do not belong in this house. You have no authority in this house. So get out in Jesus' name. We divorce you. We renounce you. We hate you. We expose you. We bind you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to loose God's people and let them go in Jesus' name. Right now, why don't you just lift your hands and declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I love you, Jesus. Come on, you tell him. I love you, Jesus. Just keep playing, Chuck. I love you, Jesus. If the Holy Spirit begins to move on you, then just begin to speak in a heavenly language right now. The Holy Spirit is in this place right now. He's the Who is the King of glory? He is the Lord Almighty, the Lord strong in battle, the Lord that reigns victorious. And I know I kept you past 8 o'clock, but God is so worth it. Lord Jesus, Lord, let our praise rise up as a sweet-smelling aroma to you right now. Let your rest be in this house. Let your presence be in this house. Come on, lift your voice right now. Let your glory be in this house. Let your freedom be in this house right now in the name of Jesus. Come on and fill the temple. I can't stop right now. You're free to go, but I can't stop right now. Somebody needs the victory, and the presence of God is here right now to give you victory. You reign, Lord Jesus. You reign, Lord Jesus. You reign, Lord Jesus. There is no darkness in you. Send the darkness on its way today, Jesus. 
Expose the darkness. Make a fool of it. Make a mockery of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heal marriages. Heal hearts. Thank you. You're free to go. May the Spirit of the Lord bless you, Chuck. Just keep playing if you will. No visiting in the sanctuary, please. No visiting in the sanctuary. You can visit out there. Worship as long as you want.